First off, I want to thank my space buddies for supporting my YouTube with comments and likes. You guys are just amazing. We have passed 500 subs and we are on our way to 1000. And as always, show me that my content is good by liking the video, of course. It takes a second to do it and it shows me exactly what I need to focus on. In this Eve Echoes podcast, we will talk about a pirate life and how some people think outside the box and making goals in this game for their own benefits. A podcast about mercenaries and personalities. So ensure your vessel and let's jump in. Hello and welcome, good space guy. Thank you for joining, my man. Of course, happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me to your podcast. Of course. How are you doing today? I'm doing really well. Um, can't complain about much. It just honestly, the day's just getting started for me. So I have, I have a lot to look forward to, but honestly, it's going swimmingly so far how about you i am doing great my kids got to sleep early so i had time <laughs> to prepare some stuff here and i will make uh, a video soon about uh, hacking actually so you're the big boss of six seal yes uh i'm the executor of six seal so the president of pale horse pirating company um we're a small mercenary alliance and well, I would honestly say probably pirates first, mercenary second. Um, but you know, honestly, we're just a bunch of gamers having fun doing PvP. That's the way it's supposed to be. So you're pirates. How is that life? You know, the pirate life is. Uh, I would say it's unconventional, especially if you're coming from the perspective of being in an established alliance. Pale Horse originally was in Terran Federation back in the day, and we enjoyed and, you know, participated in, you know, the standard alliance life with ratting, mineral buyback programs, yeah. SRP programs, CTAs, you know, alliance level taxes, and all the things that come with being in an organization like that. Um, during the Pantheon War, a lot of our pilots found their groove in solo and maybe one or two guys going out and PvPing deep into Delve for extended periods of time. Um, and so what we ended up doing is not going to CTAs as an arrangement, Karen Federation, and in exchange for not going to CTAs, we would just spend and live our lives in Delve and in Aquarius doing whatever we could to have PVP. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of how we, that's kind of, that's, that's the short story of how Pale Horse got started on the mercenary life is we, we realized we really didn't like CTAs. We didn't like sitting on a gate for hours um, or defending structures, but we really had a talent in going out in one to two man to, you know, maybe 10 man fleets at most. And making a big impact with that. Yeah, that's powerful. It's powerful and it's a lot of fun and it keeps people on their toes, you know, when they see someone who is, you know, back back in those days it was just, you know, stabber fleet issues and omen navy issues. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we'd go in and, you know, a SFI and an Oni can can take out a Cinnable fairly easily, right? Yeah. Um and it was just a way to make a to make a difference and and um, have fun, but also you know contribute to the cause of the larger alliance. Yeah, I just gonna say we need more people like you, and I'm not saying it just because we're talking, <laughs> but <laughs> I need more. I think we need more people like you actually in low sec, and that is not an option right now. But I would like. Uh, type of gate camps that you guys are doing uh, for example in NRAL uh, it's like you could have that in, in uh, uh, Konora as well but it doesn't work on EVE Echoes unfortunately but I would like that I, I really want EVE Echoes to be more dangerous 
but I also want it to be more casual for high sec players. So I, I totally agree. Um, low sec was a really interesting. Well, as soon as uh, narrow scanners came out, it totally changed the game for low sec. I think everyone can agree with that, whether they like it or they hate it. Um, <laughs> there's there's valid arguments on both sides of that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, on that first day, we just had a field day. But one of the things that we noticed was, you know, PVEers who, who were dedicated to it and who were playing the game adapted very quickly. Um, yeah, they had and to. They had to adapt very quickly. And in the first, you know, even after the first 24 hours of scanners being released, um, we noticed our kills went from like, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't have the specific numbers to quote in front of you right now. And I think it went from like 100 billion or 200 billion down just dramatically to drop because people started paying attention. They, started fitting the ships appropriately and now the scanner game in low sec is still obviously it's a, still very viable people do it all the time it's it's just very different than that initial wave um and you've seen it affect the economy as well yeah yeah i think um, it's for the better, better. Sorry. <laughs> i think it's for the better too i mean right now plex is overall more affordable for casual players um before um and this is a different topic altogether, so I won't really go into it much more than that. But it, it definitely affected the price of Plex. Oh yeah, it did. Um, it did. So yeah, you you are the guys who put up the gate camp at Enriel, right? Yes, that's us. We uh, we like Enriel. <laughs> Why don't you let me pass? <laughs> um, you know, Sheev, you know, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> and we uh we harbored no ill will to any neutral or red even um it's just a policy of if it's not blue shoot it <laughs> if it's not purple shoot it of course um sometimes if we go too long without having a kill we accidentally shoot each other <laughs> that's even better <laughs> yeah okay. so um uh some people uh don't don't like it very much but i think it's just part of the game um and we even have some people, I mean, I can't guarantee this going on record. I can't guarantee this. Um, but we do have people that are like, hey, I like gate camping. Can I gate camp with you? And we've had, you know, not purple shoot it fleets with people who just like hanging out there and kind of just chilling, shooting whatever comes in, and saying yeah. good fight, giving the salute. Of course. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, so sorry, not sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> It's fine. I think I yeah. think it's good. I mean, I usually go through uh, through Konora to get to to get to that side of the space because that's where there are no blues. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I actually went there two days ago, and I went there with a very expensive ship. And I was like, I'm gonna do something crazy for my channel, and I'm gonna do, you know, I, I will jump in there and I will see where I will head. You know, I usually jump in and there's there's nobody there or there is a few people then I I attack them and hopefully I win and I can continue and stuff like that but I landed on the gate 2 days ago like two jumps before Konora I got a message from a guy and he said are you going to Nolsec and I'm like yeah I am uh, <laughs> okay have fun and I was like that is weird <laughs> and then <laughs> then I entered Konora and uh, another guy PM me and he's like, hey Shiv. I was like, yeah, hey, <laughs> what's what's going on? He's like, I love your videos. Um, by the way, are you, what are you doing? And I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna see if I can find some fights. Oh, yeah, I, I think you will. And I was like, what, <laughs> what is going on? And he, he said, he talked a little bit about, yeah, there's, I mean, if you wanna fight, I mean, yeah, just, uh, just, um, just fly around and have fun. <laughs> You know, it was very weird. And I was like, okay, this is... Okay, whatever. You know, I was like, yeah, okay, sure. And I walked to the Enreal gate. And there were like 10 people on the gate, in, like on Konora side. Reds and greys. You know, and I was like, oh, oh, this is weird. This is not normal. And I was very close to jump in because I was like... I asked people in local and I was like, oh, uh, what's going on on the other side? And they'd be like, yeah, they have a camp. And I was like, okay, what kind of ships do they have? Uh, they have a, a Guardian and a, I think a Raven, um, maybe a, um, 
not a rattlesnake, uh, a scorpion, uh, and a few cruisers. And I was like, okay, I can handle that. <laughs> I was very <laughs> close to jump in, and I was like what sitting were you there. Flying? <laughs> I was flying my uh, striker raven. Oh, uh, that's a good ship. A yeah, nice it's, ship. it's uh, non accord with. Uh, I boosted three times on it, and uh, um, you know, with the non core boosts, um, mm-hmm. the thermo cores. Yeah, and I got three good ones. So he's like, it's expensive as fuck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I I can probably do that, you know, maybe. I mean, it's worth the try. And and I actually had to go and do something in real life, so I just left my phone and I come back. And you know, after a while, the, your brain kind of gets all this thoughts and i come back to the to the phone and there's just as many people there and my brain had started to tell me like okay they know that i'm gonna jump in so now there's even more mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like okay i gotta do this another time i'm just gonna die so i i docked yeah. and i i uh, jumped in my pod uh mm-hmm. and i and i and i jumped into norsec just to see what what was going on <laughs> and holy damn that was uh, that was uh, a real gate camp. <laughs> a quick trip for you, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was very cool to see. Uh, I liked it very much. I tried to say hi and like, "What are you guys doing?" And I just got popped right away. So, <laughs> not even a hi. <laughs> rude. <laughs> yeah, very rude. I think I actually typed rude. I don't. I'm not sure if that got into the look or though, but yeah. So very good. Very good work you guys are doing exactly what they're supposed to. Even, the, uh, even killing very me. Good at that. <laughs> yes. Yes, that is amazing. And, uh, so, <laughs> you want to add something and, to that? <laughs> yeah, I do, actually. Um, right. I think it's very good that you hopped in in the pod um, just to check it out. The, just this morning, actually. So in the mornings, I drive and I take my wife to work. But I check, I check the NRL gate in the mornings just to see what's going on. And I noticed there is a gray camp there that is honestly new to the area. And if it makes you feel any better, I had the same, almost the exact same experience you had with your Raven Striker, but with my Abaddon. Um, and I didn't hesitate to jump in because honestly, I haven't had, a, I have, I've been very busy lately and I haven't had a lot of PVP opportunities. So I was just like, I'm going for it. I have 15 minutes before I got to drive. So I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will be completely honest. Full disclosure: I did not win that fight. Um, oh, you lost it. As in, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't come away not in a pot, right? But I feel like I did win that fight because I tanked a lot of damage from I think it was maybe four or five battleships and assorted cruisers and frigates. Yeah. So um, it was a good test of the Abaddon, and I totally relate to what you're saying about the. Uh, the Raven kind yeah. of having that feeling, thinking you could take it, um, and at least having a good fight, knowing that you, uh, if you had gone in there, you would have done your damned best, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, losing uh, a ship is a big part of Eve. Yeah, it's a big part, and it's how you hone your skills. Um, but yeah, Enreal is it's where we like to hang out, and I'll be completely honest with you. I mean, it's a contested gate, so I think it's one of Boyd's main thoroughfares in and out of Nullsec. So, I mean, they'll if, if we're hanging out there for too long or we're all day or um, I'm, I'm guessing if a Void has something valuable they want to bring in and out, they'll bring a blob, right? They'll call a CTA or yeah. if not, they'll just bring up a bunch of people. And I mean, we're a small pirate alliance and they're a federation, right? Of course. So, um, I mean, they'll they'll just come and they'll they'll camp that gate. So it's it's never it's never um, you never know what you're gonna never know what you're gonna get on that gate. And I think that's one of the reasons why we like it so much is because it's so unpredictable and it's just always a lot of fun. Yes, of course. So the the gray gang you have not you have not seen before? Is that something you uh, wanna eliminate? The- well, I mean, I, I don't know about eliminate, but it's great to have them there for content. Um, I think it was a honestly, I think it was Han Han Alliance, and I, I don't know oh. if they're affiliated with the Void or not. I think they might be, so they might be there with Void. Um, I didn't spend too much time looking at tags; I just saw gray ships that I wanted to shoot, so I kind of went in there. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. 
But I mean, content is content. I, I really like Void in terms of just I think they're a good player base. Um, they they really bring some good stiff competition in terms of PvP force. Um, you know, we win a lot, they win a lot, and at the end of the day, we're just having fun. So, Void has a lot of good people. Oh yeah, very friendly. Is Void gray or red to you? They're gray. Uh, They're gray. And to be right. complete, yeah. So to be just full kind of disclosure on the way that Six Seal handles uh, newts and, gr and newts and reds is the only time someone is red is you know, given something. At, there's one exception in recent history, and we can go into that a little bit later. I think we have plenty sure. of time to talk. About. Yeah. Um, the only time an organization is red to us is if we're being contracted on them if if someone yeah. has hired us to take them out that way it helps us distinguish when we're you know paying our pilots for the bounties that we're taking on them who we're paying what for so that's really predominantly 99 percent of the time the only time we set any organization red okay okay an interesting question how do you calculate how much you charge for uh, mercenary jobs so I won't go into specific pricing based off of past contracts. Um, you know, that's a little bit too much of how the sausage is made, right? But yeah, I, I'm sure. free to say um, clients have approached us with a variety of jobs, with a variety of price ranges, and, and we're flexible. So we'll do anything from that's very lucrative for us, and like a very expensive contract for the client, uh, that the client is happy to pay because of maybe it's a very challenging target or maybe they just feel very passionate about the job. Um, other times we've had very casual contracts that don't pay very well, but it's just, you know, something extra that the client um, is obviously has a reason for hiring us, but maybe their motivation isn't very, or they're, they're not feeling very passionate about it or they're not feeling very strongly about it. So we're, the pricing and what we expect from clients is flexible based on the nature of the contract and because of the nature of what we do for work is so broad it's pretty much negotiated from contract to contract but, okay cool yeah and, and but the way that typically looks like because i mean i know that was vague is basically um a client will say um i want you to focus on this group in this or these areas and then myself or my contract negotiator will say okay how does this percentage per kill mail sound to you so um, x percent per the just the net value of the kill mail will be paid by the client to us at the end of each day or at the end of each week um, and the timelines on that is, is very flexible and we don't typically do a deposit we just do pay as you go so okay. if we rack up one billion in bills on day one and the client wants to do a daily contract, then we'll just contract them for a billion at the end of the day, or they'll send us a contract for a billion at the end of the day. Yeah. And then we'll pay our pilots that night. So pilots get paid as soon as we get paid. And the client, as soon as they pay, gets an updated dashboard based that shows them exactly what they've paid how much is left in the contract if it is a contract with like a, a limit a right limit, yeah um they get a, a live kill board of everything that we've killed where we've killed it how much it was worth um what was killed the link to the kill mail and then they'll also get a map that shows basically a heat map that shows regions times chips value and it'll be a heat map showing all of that distributed across the systems that we've that we've killed for them in. That's so great. It's you know it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a it brings another level of game experience to the client because at this point they're getting basically executive level dashboards based on the performance of a service that they've hired. Um, so I think it brings a lot of value, and we have a lot of fun doing it. I don't think we've. Yeah, we haven't had a client that's been dissatisfied with it. And we've had clients that have done really small contracts, you know, anything under five billion. We've had clients that have, that have contracted us for tens of billions. So we have a pretty wide range of of people that we've worked with. Would you say that you are um, 
a small but a rich alliance? We're small, uh, but when it comes to wealth, it's feast or famine. As contractors, we're either doing really, really, really well or we're getting by. Um, yeah. We don't, like I said, we don't spend a lot of time ratting. We don't really mine. Um, a lot of the things that you do for ISK to get reliable and consistent amounts of money in isn't part of our alliance structure. So a lot of the money that we do get is from PVP. You know, did that person drop in, uh, predator webs? You know, yeah. and did we get that rattlesnake kill that dropped all the C types or, you know, even and yeah. now B types? And we work in those small fleets and um, it's up to the FC to determine how people want to split the loot in those fleets. And typically it's just equal shares to everybody who's on the kill mail and then equal share to any Lodgy or guardians that are on the fleet. So everybody gets cut in equally. And even, even frigates? Yeah, even frigates. So everybody gets cut in equally because frigates are incredibly valuable assets to us because they're able to scout ahead, they're able to tackle, they're able to scan. Uh, so everybody gets cut in and into that loot split. And yeah. it's up to the FC and the fleet on how that happens. And I really don't get involved with that on a daily basis. Um, because I don't need to. The pilots take care of each other. It sounds amazing, and um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Are, are you hiring? Like, are you hiring? Are you recruiting? I mean, <laughs> we're. I mean, we're always recruiting. Pale Horse is always recruiting. All of the other corps within Sixth Seal are recruiting. We have plenty of open alliance slots. Um, the the only thing we'd ask is that you have um, either PVP experience existing or the willingness to learn and not being afraid to to lose ships, even if it's just a stabber. Yeah. Right. We have um, I have a pilot that I'm very proud of, Mashikins, who got to one thousand, and I think he's over a thousand kill marks on a stabber fleet issue. That's nice. And he'll go through and do insane things with that SFI. And he, I've seen him take down materials, not just passive materials who were like asleep on a, on the gate, but like active materials. Um, alone. I'm not saying he goes through and does that every day. Yeah, alone. I'll, In a I'll send you the comment later. Um, Holy crap! Are you recording any, any of this? Like, <laughs> yeah, I have, I'm, I have a recording too. So send me the stuff, and I can make sweet videos for you guys, so you can recruit more people. I don't know. Awesome. Come up will, with something. Uh, I would I would do something for you. I'll amazing. send you I'll send you some kill mails we're pretty proud of, but this this guy and, and I appreciate that by the way. Um we have I mean not just mushy, but we have some very talented pilots that fly everything from you know T6 cruisers all yeah. the way up to bling. And one of the things I really appreciate about the, the, the group of pilots that we work in is that we have a whole spectrum and we have a whole range of pilots that um, aren't afraid to fight and win and they know how to take it when they lose. And we do lose a lot. You know, we're not gods. We're humans and we make mistakes and we take on fights that we know we can't win just for the fun of it. Yeah. So if someone so, if someone listened to this and want to hire mercenaries, how would they go about hiring you guys? So the first thing they would do is just um, either go onto our Discord, the Six Seal Discord, which is available on if they if they're on the Eve Echoes Discord, they just have to look at Corporation Recruitment and they'll find it there. Yep. Or just reach out to Good Space on Discord or David Six Six Zero Six on Discord or send us a message in game. I can and also link it in the description here. Perfect. Yeah, that, yes. that works. If you, cool. if you give me a, a valid link to, to the Discord, then it's easier for them to find it. Excellent. Yeah, that, that works too. And uh, again, I appreciate that. And just if anybody out there is looking to uh, hire us for any number of reasons, that's, that's, that's where to start. This is amazing. I think. I've always bring up this, but uh, making your own goals in games gen in general is very important. And in Eve Echoes, it's even more important. And doing stuff like this is not, it's not built into the game. This is brought up uh, through people. And to making this kind of stuff work and to make it actually viable 
for a corporation to survive. It's just excellent. I mean, this is very good. I can't agree with you more. I think that the thing that keeps me playing Eve Echoes, it's the only game I play, by the way. Um, so the thing that makes it so attractive to me as a game is the fact that other than a few you know, brokers' fees that can't be avoided and all these different things, it's a completely open sandbox to do with it, do with it what you will. Yes. And I can't encourage um, my fellow gamers strongly enough to, to find a goal, like you say, and pursue it. You know, if that means becoming 555 in all manufacturing and reverse engineering, I think that's amazing. You know, if that is get to 1,000 kill marks in your SFI, that is awesome. And I think that's an amazing goal. And you'll find a lot of gratification in pursuing whatever goal you set out for yourself. Yes. I would also say have several goals. If I would have set up PvP goals for myself, I would probably set like 1,000 kill marks on my uh, Stabber Fleet issue, for example. And then I would have... Because I know I will, I will meet that demand. So <laughs> I'm very driven. Okay. Uh, so I would put more, more goals. So after that, I would have like, okay, so I will do all Amara ships, you know. And then I would have like every ship in the game. So I would always have a goal. I would always have something to strive for. And that makes me be able to play the game a lot longer than other people might do so the, um, that don't have goals. Get uh, goals. Yeah, absolutely. Get goals. <laughs> did you play EVE online? Yes. Yes, I did. And I... Honestly, that was so long ago for me. Um, that was, I think that was back in 2013. And I have a confession to make, Sheev. Yes. I was a Care Bear. I was a CNI Care Bear. <laughs> <laughs> so I had is... no idea what I was doing in that game. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's it's like life. You you find your way. <laughs> exactly, and I'll you know prior to so the the way I discovered Eve Echoes actually is very weird, um, and it has to do with Eve on. So I found EVE Online, I think it was just through an ad or something years and years ago, right? Maybe 2010, 2011, 2012, I was exposed to it. And then 2013, I finally decided I was going to try it. And I went, I logged into my account and I saw that I just, I mean, I, I know from my memories that I was care bearing a lot, but then I logged into my account and I just, I, I realized I was, Later in my career in 2013, I was in a small pirate corporation and all of my ships were cruisers and they all had like the dual scram web. And I was like, okay, dual scram, or excuse me, dual web scram. Yeah. I wasn't just a Care Bear because why would I use dual web scram, you know, <laughs> on my Drake <laughs> and on my CNI and yeah. on my Corax? And I had, you know, these Logi ships as well. And so I went through like all of my old mails in the game and it was these communications back and forth like hey we're going on a fleet and all these different things you know um good space my name and my name in eve echoes was different um you know are you bringing the logic are you gonna make this and i was like i i guess i was in a pirate corp what you <laughs> didn't remember no i swear to you it was like it was like total recall or something or just wow. like this this weird amnesia and a lot happened, so in real life, a lot happened to me between 2013 and 2019, excuse me, 2020. And yeah. um, so just a lot, I've changed a lot of, of, as a person, uh, an enormous amount of things, all good things have, have, have been in my life. And it's just, you know, I played Eve for a little while, probably maybe a year or two, and then I just stopped. Um, and then I log in again. And I just, the corp is completely dead. I have like all the corpse assets in my hangar. It's not much. We're apparently very poor pirates. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's normal pirates. I just pirates. like these ancient messages and I'm reading through these old email or these old messages in game. Yeah. I'm like, what? It was like, it was like rediscovering a part of myself almost. Um, so that, that is my story of Eve online. And then. I think it was like something on YouTube. I was watching like a Scott Manley video about the old Fountain Wars or something. That kind of got me thinking right. about it again. And that's when I logged in. And it was just coincidentally that it was maybe, I think it was in August or around that time when all this was happening. And then 
I heard about Eve echoes through that. So, um, you started the first day and then you got stuck. Oh, I started the first day. So, I mean, all that led up to me learning about Eve Echoes, getting excited about it, being on the mobile game. Because I'm much more casual about gaming these days. Yeah. Um, I started my account on 8.13, and the first thing I did was I, I, I had enough of my memory as being a Care Bear in Eve Online to know that I wanted to do something different in Eve Echoes. So I thought, I think I'm going to be a pirate. And perfect. I don't know much about that, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. And I know that I like rail guns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's literally all the thought that went into it. <laughs> um, so I gave myself the name Good Space Guy because um, I just wanted to give people kind of a surprise. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and honestly, the first, I think, week of Eve Echoes was just I had a like a Mark One snub nose fit catalyst, um, and Good. with like a Mark One to five micro warp drive, and I would go to like Orohunin or anything close to Jita that's like point four. Yeah, and I would find a venture in a belt and just micro warp drive to it at zero and hope to God I you know knocked it off of alignment because <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't afford the 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 warp disruptors for the longest yeah. time. No one. Like, I had no idea where they came from. I didn't know how special anomalies worked. I knew nothing. They were expensive in the beginning. They were extremely expensive. And if you didn't know where to find them or what to do with base anom or not with base anom, but with any of the anomalies, like, it was just all so much to take in. You had a, so, great, you had a great time during the um, Halloween event, I, I assume, because I was kind of a pirate back then as well. You know, the, during that time, it was it was really fun. That was when we were solidified into Terran Federation at that point. Um, oh, all right. And we did a, we had a lot of fun with the Halloween event. I had moved away from doing a lot of low sec ganking at that point. And I know it was like only like maybe two weeks into October, like the end of October. Yeah, the game moved quickly at that point. Um, we had solidified into Terran Federation, and we we're just roaming around. Doing the Halloween anoms, ganking people in the anoms. Um, I think at that point I was maybe in a thorax. All right. Um, I, I I could scroll down, but it'd be scrolling down forever. So yeah, <laughs> I'm, it's I'm fine. Scrolling down <laughs> I just I'm curious. I just remember I used to I used to find the the Halloween an anomalies and uh, uh, or or I did farm for them. Uh, whatever and as soon as i got him into them i just jumped in the first room and i killed everything and i just sat there <laughs> like oh, you get like so 30 people like easy in a day that just jumped in right right like on zero and just grab a web and i sat there in my harbinger or my prophecy or whatever and i had also my i had a corp back then i had a corp a long time but back then we were not that big so it was me and and the corp mates and we just hang there sat there like a whole day and just talking and then mm -hmm. you know you heard the sound like boom <laughs> someone came in and i was like let's take him oh yeah so yeah it's <laughs> it's it's great and i i was a pirate um i was a pirate in eve echoes i was a uh a bit of a miner for a while like for a year but i was I was a pirate for the most of the time and then I got into marketing. So that's why I do marketing today on Eve Echoes. This is a question I always ask, but I want to hear your points on it. So how do you think Eve Echoes work in terms of stability or how NetEase have implemented some items and game rules? How would you say that Eve Echoes works today? That's a really good question. In terms of stability, one of the benefits of being in a small alliance that does not have any CTAs is that we don't typically find ourselves in systems with JITA-like levels, but with combat, right? So like outposts or corporation citadel fights with big alliance yeah. blob. Um, so we don't, I mean, I, I told, I've been there, I know what that's like, it's frustrating, but we don't deal with that on a daily basis or even really ever um so because don't, we don't put ourselves in position yeah you don't feel it we don't feel that but one of the things that we do feel 
um, you know, free, more frequently than I would like is, you know, you land on grid and your screen goes black and it says reconnecting or <laughs> 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 you know exactly what I'm talking yes, about. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I've lost and, so much. and that kind of thing is is frustrating and it can make all the difference in a fight or you know you you jump through a gate there's a gate camp and your modules aren't showing up you know? yeah and and stuff like that where i don't know if it's a connection issue or if it's a net server issue or something I'm, I'm not a tech whiz in that way but it's just i just know that it's frustrating um and it has caused a lot of a lot of my pilots and myself to lose ships um, it's always a good fight, but I mean, those are kind of some of the issues I would like to see addressed. Yes. Um, in terms of in terms of implementing in-game things, I I don't there's no I don't really have a bone to pick with anything. Um, that is nice. It's the the only feeling. thing I can really think of, and to be fair with you, I haven't spent too much time personally in Arena. So I know a lot of my pilots have, and they're enjoying it. Um, I haven't spent a lot of, I actually haven't spent any time scanning um, in terms of like the relic scanning. So I don't have any, I'm not able to make any comment on that. One of the things that personally I would have liked to see done differently, and it is a big ask, so I'm not really upset about it, is the implementation of nihilist space versus wormhole space. Um, yeah. When when that rolled out and we finally first were able to get a look at it, it became immediately apparent that we weren't going to be able to live in the nihilist space, which is something that we were looking forward to as a possibility. Um, you know, much like wormhole space, yeah, Eva Line. I I I so agree. <laughs> I wanted wormholes a lot sooner than nihilist space, and now we got nihilist space instead. I actually hope that uh, the wormhole space will be like Nyla space. I I would really like to live in Nyla space, but in what the future could call the wormhole space. But it looks like Nyla space because that is so beautiful. Right, right. I understand. Yeah, and I I totally agree. Oh, one thing I just thought of. Good. One big complaint I have for Netties. <laughs> yes. And Killboard API. I need yes. that. Badly, we need it as a community so badly. Yes, um, we do. We also need has, we also need a ranking system of some kind, like a ranking. Like even if we're able to get an API and have something like Z Killboard uh, done by a third party or something like some sort of ranking system, some sort of way of keeping track. Um, as a community, I think it will add so much more enjoyment and insight into the game. Yeah. And as the administrator, and administrator is a boring term, but I am an administrator of a of a mercenary corporation and a mercenary alliance, it'll make my job a lot easier. <laughs> yes. Of course. So um that's that's something I've been looking forward to since I think they're I, I need to keep better I need to keep up to up to date. I need to be more vigilant about keeping up to date with their updates and their dev notes and all that. But I think they were saying that that's going to be coming up. Yes, it is. And like and you they, said in August, but we're already halfway through August. Yeah, it's not going to show up now. <laughs> but it, exactly. they are working on it. Uh, but apparently it, there is some there are some issues with it. I'm not sure what it is. But they are working on it. So we will get that. And that is that is an implemented goal from NetEase that we can use as a third party program. Um, so that is good. I mean, you have already implemented that goal in your cooperation with your type of mercenary uh, contract thing. So you already keep kind of up to date with what you kill, but you do not have like a ranking, right? Exactly. Well, it, it, you'll be interested and I'll send you a link to this later so you can see it. Um, oh, yeah, but we do you. have a pilot dashboard um that so we use eve bot and eve stats we use eve stats for non paper kill kills and that's just kind of a common way of very quickly seeing how we're doing against the other players that use it keyword that use it right yeah um and then we have eve bot that was designed and built and implemented by hexalize back in the day um and that is basically it looks at the kill mail and parses it out into these different into 
the things that matter about the kill mail. Yeah. And we, it's basically after that, we have a program that basically is an automatic uh, robot. I don't want to call it an API, but it's a robot that takes that information and makes it very easy for me to quality check it, upload it to our client dashboard, upload it to our pilots performance dashboard so that they can see how they're doing within other uh, compared to other pilots in the corp. Yep. The Alliance. Um, and it, we also use it for billing and invoicing. So we do have something, but it, it's, it's, it's far from perfect. There's a lot of things that get broken very quickly about it. And just having an API would make that dream. <laughs> <laughs> so fingers crossed, we're rooting for NetEase, or I'm cheering them on, I'm cheering the developers on to get that done soon. <laughs> we're hoping for that in the future, definitely. Yeah. Uh, is there anything anything else you want in the future? You know, I, I'm, I'm a very much in the moment kind of person. Um, that's one of the reasons I like to play this game, is just I like to just kind of stop thinking about things strategically long-term and just think about how can we have fun and how can we maximize everything in the moment. So off the top of my head, I'm fairly happy with the way things are in the game right now. I mean, other than the API, um, but that is obviously in progress and it'll come when it comes. I might think of something later and if I do, I'll bring it up later in the podcast, but I'm honestly, you know, T10 and happy about it. So. Have you been dual Omega the whole time? So I was, except for a month, and that was before I really like understood the difference between standard and dual Omega. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I was dual Omega, and then like I just like my dual Omega ran out, and I just wasn't paying attention or something, and I went for a whole month without having it. And then I was like, "Hey guys, um, so they're saying I should buy Omega twice. What's up with that?" <laughs> 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 like just like really simple things, um, and they're like, "Yeah, that's dual mega. You you you'll get you know more skill points faster." And I had all the chips already at that point. Like I knew about that. Yeah. All right. Um, and like it was just like just aside from that one month where I just kind of oofed it, um, I've been dual mega the whole time. So. <laughs> yeah, I I made a video recently, very recently. I mean the. My channel is everything is very recently because my channel is so new. But uh, I made a video recently about skill points that, like, if you're dual, dual Omega and you can fly whatever you want to fly, and you are, for example, T10 or whatever, then you can just skill without skilling. You can just let it run oh, yeah. and have it allocated. So I made a video about that. And uh, now it got a lot of attention uh, for a while. And then today i read someone typed like oh i wanted this for like a year like a year ago this video i've been training skills and now i have to allocate them and i felt so like oh man why did <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> even though i <laughs> i didn't even have a youtube channel but yeah stuff like that needs to come out right away i i don't have the youtube i don't know what you could call it but I, like the youtube spirit or whatever so i don't I mean, for me, everything is so crystal clear in the game. It's like, why should I tell people to do hacking? <laughs> I mean, it's it's so easy. <laughs> and I mean, that, may, that puts you in a good spot to be a content creator because if it's that clear to you and you have that understanding of it, you can share that with. The yeah, but the, that... but the problem is, I feel dumb sharing stuff that I think people <laughs> know. So for like, to, to bring it into perspective, how I feel it, it's kind of like. I'm making a video that I say, you know, if you are T8 and you skill some more, you are then T9, and then you will become <laughs> T10. All right, bye guys. You know, it's like, <laughs> and I, I promise you, if I make a video like that, someone will say like, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. Nice one. And like 99% will say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell so, yeah, but it's hard for me to actually understand like what do people know and what don't they know. Um, yeah, so right. I have a problem with that, and that is something I have to work on. I think some stuff is is easy when it's not easy. One of the things that I have no understanding of is structures. I don't know anything about the citadels, the citadels, or even player-owned stations. The benefits, yeah. the 
the modules. I've never owned a player owned station. I've only ever docked in them or blown them up <laughs> or tried to. Yeah. So I know I know very little. And one of my one of my members was asking me about the different the, the new modules. Yeah. For the citadels and the Entosis links and we're thinking yeah. about strategies for that. And it's I mean, I'm getting educated on it, but uh, I have, you know, it's the, the information. If you're just reading the description cards that's provided to you by NetEase in the, in the market, it's very vague. Yeah. It and there's help. a lot of, there's a lot of guesswork that you have to do if you're simply just using the information that's presented to you in the game. Um, yeah. Yeah. But you actually have to, I think, read between the lines. It's pretty much like Eve Online was you. I mean, okay, here is um, Shield uh, Resistance module, whatever, and yeah. it says, <laughs> okay, you you increase your resistance, and that's pretty much what it says. But you have to go into the statistics of it and and kind of read the statistics to understand how it actually works, because there is no information. Yeah, absolutely. There is there is not a lot of information, and if you want to go through. And it says something, you know, generic, like, um, you know, the, the, the benefits of this module or this rig diminish the more that you use of them, you know? Yeah. And so a lot of what we do in our fittings is trying to figure out, okay, well, how many of these can I use before it becomes not? Yeah. Not before it becomes pointless to do that or not. And that's probably one of the time, one of the things we spend most of our free time talking about, <laughs> right? It's just, yes. <laughs> discussions along those lines <laughs> and that is the beauty of eve so but but anyway the entosis link um and the tethering is something you need to read up on because that is something that will make you be able to have a station for free absolutely that's uh that's what we're thinking about <laughs> yeah <laughs> why is i was looking at your other interviews and i was like intimidated i was like oh my gosh i don't know what i can talk about for that long but you i mean this is good it's flowing you're very easy to talk with chief oh thank you i've heard that before so i take your word for it now <laughs> i've been a fan of podcasts since years back and i never thought about having a podcast um until i saw eve echoes and i thought i saw that there's so many interesting people that I know nothing about and I want to know more about them. And the reason for that was actually I I think I listened it, it was a Joe Rogan show and he invited Miley Cyrus. <laughs> that was nice. like, you know, Miley Cyrus, you know, I don't know anything about her. All I hear is you know, bullshit pretty much, you know. She was some kind of kids actor or whatever and People don't like her and not like her songs and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, I'm listening to this one. And after, after the podcast, I felt like she's fucking amazing. So <laughs> it changed everything I knew. And I feel like if I can do this on Eve Echoes, I, I mean, some people are like, you get the feeling that they are real assholes, for example. Then they are pretty good guys. And the pretty good guys are amazing guys. So. This is a way for people in the alliances or the corporations to get a more personal feeling about who is maybe their CEO or their uh, fleet commander or whatever it is. And uh, that is easier for them to connect, I think. I love what you're doing. That, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Thank you. I think, it's, I think it's really good for the community. I hope so. <laughs> oh, and, I know it. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, I really hope that Netties actually see what I'm doing because I had 60 subscribers four months ago or a bit shorter than that. And I talked to Netties, I talked to Joseph, and I said, I need a podcast with you and you need to fix this with the game and you need to do all this. And he said, um, Well, we, we only do that to content creators. And I said, Okay, sure. I will be a content creator then. And uh, he said, well, you need more people. And i like, okay. So I got more people. I got a lot more subscribers. I had like, I think 300, like two, like a month ago or something. And I reached back to him and he said, okay, you can be a content creator. And I was like, I don't want to be a content creator. <laughs> I That's just want to, so yeah, I just <laughs> want to fix the game. 
just talk to me, damn it. And I, I know what you need. And it was like, okay, if you can get more attraction, we see what we can do. But we have other content creators that bring in more attractions than you. So we see if we have time. So I'm working on it. I will, I will try to grow as much as I can until they feel like, okay, if this guy tells people that this game is crap, they will leave. So they, <laughs> so they have to actually listen to what the people want. Um, you don't want NetEase doesn't want the uh, same review that uh, what was the one that you did recently? Infinite Lagrange got. I know what kind of game this is. <laughs> oh man, that is a hard game to love. <laughs> I love that review. I thought I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah. Speaking about you, real quick, uh, yes. what was the um, you, you in one of your previous goals? You're talking about you had a goal for subscribers. Are you well on the way? And have you met it or? Uh, when was this? Because I, um, as I said, I put goals to everything, and and to make a short story long, then <laughs> I started YouTube actually because I felt in every game that I play, and I'm not sure if this is everyone, but I of course feel from my perspective that I'm getting fucking good at games that I want to be good at. I mean, if I put my time into it and I kind of do my homework. I become very good and I thought that YouTube is pretty much a game so I would just play YouTube and I would do the same thing I do in games I will do on, on YouTube so I will learn from the good guys like those people that make it and, and and do good good content and like how do they do and I just learn and I just copy it and I just try to do my own thing but with their knowledge so my goal was of course 500 subs just because that is a pretty good number and uh, and my goal is now thousand, of course. Thousand subs is uh, pretty substantial towards netties. But yeah, I'm I got five hundred yesterday, I think. So that was the big I thing. I see that you're five oh eight, and congratulations on that goal. You met it. Now you put a bigger goal. <laughs> now I have a bigger goal. <laughs> yes. Oh, so my whole life is goals. You know, I have four kids. I have a beautiful wife. She's amazing. She does so much for me. Um, but it's like, I cannot sit still. So I, I always need to do something. I'm not sure if that is something wrong with my head, but I cannot, like if I sit in the sofa and watch a, like a movie, my head is 90% somewhere else and just thinking about stuff, either games really... or, so yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not sure what the word is, but I, like I'm someone who always do something. I'm not sure what that is. So you're a doer. Yes, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> exactly the word I'm looking for. So I'm a doer instead of a don't doer. I don't know. <laughs> but you are also a doer. You have made this amazing. Uh, uh, did you make the corporation too? So I, I'll be completely on. I'll give you a little bit more of a history yeah. on that. So yeah. I started amazing. as just like a, as a, as a low sec ganker and a catalyst. Like, that's what I was. I was just kind of a, just doing hood rat shit and low sec and a catalyst. Didn't know what I was doing. Just knew that it was fun. Um, and then I found another catalyst who was in the fleet. And I was like, that catalyst, I wanna, I'm going to fight that catalyst. The catalyst beat me handily, so easily. I was just in the vanilla catalyst and he was in the catalyst navy issue. I think it was like the first day or the second day of the game. Um, and I was like, hey, can I fly with you? I mean... I want to learn how to get a Catalyst Navy issue too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it was this corp called Wallet Warriors. Um, and that's how I first found about corps and flying with guys who are like-minded. And eventually, you know, we, we kind of went around the map and did all these different crazy things. And um, Pale Horse came from that. And I've always in real life just loved leadership just kind of like if there's if no one's saying is something or putting a direction i'm happy to 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 offer that um and in in the corporation i was in you know i basically found a position for myself uh, as the second in the corp and the ceo wasn't able to be there all the time so i formed a new corp some people called it a coup <laughs> that's a whole other <laughs> drama <laughs> but regardless, we formed Pale Horse out of Wallet Warriors, um, regardless of your perspective of how that happened. 
Um, and uh, we, you know, went through Terran Federation. We went through Mercenary Coalition. We left Mercenary Coalition. And eventually we just became an independent mercenary pirate corp, or I would honestly, probably in a word, privateers. Um, and various alliances were asking us to join them the entire time, but we had no desire because we didn't want the obligations that came with it. But one of the things I was noticing is as the game playership was shrinking, the number of pilots I had in my corporation was declining. The fleets we had, which were always small, were getting smaller. So I was like, okay, well, I know what we like to do. We know what we like to do. Um, should we join an alliance? We had a vote with the officers in the, in the corporation. And to my surprise, they're like, no, we want to form our own alliance. Good space. <laughs> I was Why like, not? Okay, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> so we, um, we, after a period of about maybe two or three weeks of really thinking about it, we just decided, okay, we're going to form a pirate alliance. It's not going to have any rules other than don't be toxic. Um, don't give out our contract secrets, which is impossible because only myself and another person know it. Um, That's good. And um, if you're joining our alliance, you're free to run your corp however you see it. We're not going to tax you. We're not going to make you do things that you don't want to do. Um, we're not even going to make you set our diplomacy to the alliance diplomacy. Now, if we're on a contract and you shoot a client, <laughs> you're going to have to. You're going to be responsible for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but basically, it's honestly the the how I went from my basically a solo ganker and a catalyst to an alliance executor was just kind of, I don't want to say random because it wasn't, but it was also wasn't super intentional. It just kind of happened. And it was just, how can I have more people around me to have fun with? Sounds great. So I guess it was a goal I wasn't setting intentionally to have my own alliance, but it just kind of happened. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what is your... having fun, you know, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, of course. Do you have a goal now? Um honestly my goal now is to streamline the alliance operations and we have a lot of new bros um in our ranks and I love that and I would say my number one goal as the alliance president is train people on how to be able to fly the ships they want to fly the way they want to fly them. So we have a lot of guys who've come over to us because they think they want to try the life or they see what we do and they think it's cool. And they may not have any prior PVP experience or they may have limited PVP experience. And we don't really have a program to train them. It's more of like, come hop in our fleet and you know, you'll learn through the school of hard knocks. <laughs> um, that's the best but way to we, learn. It's the best way to learn. And um, we want to support that by, you know, having very f affordable ships that are very affordably fitted that they're not afraid to fly and lose, lose in. That way they get comfortable with the idea of PVP. They get comfortable with the idea that you're going to win and you're going to lose. And they get comfortable with the techniques that we use in PVP combat in small fleets and most importantly, communications on voice um, and as solo pilots, the different techniques that you use to get out of sticky situations or maybe even be able to take on more than just a 1v1. Yes. So that's, that's what I would really like to, that's my immediate goal right now is just taking care of our pilots in that regard. Um, we <laughs> just accomplished a goal recently, which was, We've never had to deal with spies or leaks or moles or anything like that before. Yeah. But now that we're in alliance, we have other larger alliances taking interest in us um, and not always to hire us. <laughs> no, of course not. Um, so we realized that a lot of information that was not top secret, but secret was getting out. And um, David 6606, my. Alliance diplomat, my right hand man, the CEO of PHBC now. And I basically conducted a information op to uncover where those moles were. 
And this was the most interesting thing I think I've done in the game, personally speaking, so far. Because all of it is this far has just been like PvP flying and a little bit of light diplomacy, right? And contract negotiations. Yeah. But this was actually finding out, okay, who are the people in our group of trusted people that are selling information to other larger organizations about us? And so we made a, um, basically a deception and we said that David leaked some very valuable information and yes. he was <laughs> kicked out of the Alliance and he was a spy this whole time. And basically we, David threw himself on a grenade quite literally, well, not quite literally. He did not literally throw himself on a grenade, but he took, he took, <laughs> one, he took one for the well, team. Yeah. <laughs> And so he and I, from the beginning, we're like, okay, we have a, you know, we have a fairly serious problem. Um, it's not the end. It's not a game. It's not a, it's not a showstopper, but it is something we need to address. How do we do this? Um, well, what if it turns out that our top guy was a spy? Yeah. And we just made that up. And as soon as that information went out, um, we released it to a limited number of people. And then we waited to see where that went. Um, very common tactic to find spies. Yes, 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 um, very. And we found out where that information was going. <laughs> and I would consider the office success. Um, and, you know, now we have that information and we're using it. Um, and to be honest with you, everything is out in the daylight now. And I like playing the game that way more. You know, we tried the spy games, the spy game thing once. It was just a lot of work. It, we we it got is. the goals that we wanted to do, and we did what we wanted to accomplish, and that goal was very challenging. And yes. once we met that goal, I can't say I want to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I'm I'm impressed that you actually caught the guy with just like you, you said you said you gave the wrong information to some people and see and and you and you guys kind of waited to see what that led. Um, yeah, exactly. So I'm not going to disclose the entire technique no, no. that we used, but basically we uh, we we made it look like the only other person to have any information that is any value, like in our alliance, because we're a small alliance. No one really cares about us, which is the way we like it. But there's some information that people really do care about, um, and the only people that have that information, like I said, is myself and David. So we put David out there. We made it look like he wasn't reliable. People yeah. came to him, and all these different things happened, and it really gave us some interesting insights into what is actually going on. That was so. interesting. That was very cool. I thought I thought first you were gonna give like several decoy things to different people. The the information that gets out, you know where that came from. <laughs> like, okay, we we said green to this guy in. <laughs> And people think green now, so it's him. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, right. says purple. Yeah, yeah. So it was basically a variation of that technique. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's I mean, amazing. So, I mean, it's it's amazing. It's fun. The the one thing I do know, you know, is just there's always going to be spies. You're never going to get rid of them. It's part of the game. Yep. I don't mind. Um, I, if you know, honestly, at the end of the day, Sheev, if my pilots have fun flying with someone. And I know they're a spy. I'm, I'm not going to kick him out of the corporation because we're having fun. <laughs> like, <laughs> depends like, on what damage he does, right? It, well, well, yeah, exactly. You put that in perspective, and yeah. it depends. On, like, if the if the guys are losing a lot of money, or if we're losing a lot of money, and it's people aren't having fun at that point, then yeah. But if if at the end of the day it's more or less harmless, then we're all just gamers. We're all just having fun. Of course. So. I, I would say that a spy is pretty much equal to a traitor as is equal to a Red Alliance or whatever. I mean, if someone joins a corporation and I understand that people will be very upset if he kind of destroys the, the Alliance economy in some way or mm -hmm. or affect it in a, in a very bad way. I do understand that it's a, it's a hard it's a hard uh, thing to to uh, to face, but it's pretty much the same with trading or any other aspect. That I mean, if 
if I do something on trade and someone loses a lot of money or someone does that to me, I mean, I could still pro like talk to that guy afterwards and be like, he's still a good guy. And I probably would have a, a great time doing a podcast with that guy. I would have no quarrels with him whatsoever because that is outside the game. And I mean, in my opinion, a spy is, is not a horrible person. I had a podcast with Elementary72 and he was a spy in in one game, I think. And he got a lot of he got a lot of shit from that. So I think it's very wrong. I mean, it's just his job. That's the way he makes probably or hopefully money in <coughs> some way. Um but yeah, spies are everywhere and it's a part of the game. You learn how to live with it or you kick them out, pretty much. Yeah. And I can completely understand, you know, organizations with with other goals that that that, that, that Six Steel doesn't have having a much stronger stance on spies, right? Of course. But at the end of the day, as long as our client information doesn't get out, then then it's fine. Then then it's mostly fine, you know. Um. So I think you have a, you have the right mindset on it. So where do you guys live? Um, when you're not gate camping, or are you gate camping other gates as well? So we roam. We're nomads. Um, I think a lot of our guys, just because of Enrail, the base out of Kenora. I'm not afraid to say that because we welcome PvP activity. Anybody who's listening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we spend a lot of our time in Enrail, and because of that, we spend a lot of our time in Kenora. It's very easy to base out of there and just hop really quickly into an area with a lot of content. Um, but traditionally, we roam in Losec. We go spend a lot of time in Delve, and Aquarius, and Fountain. Like the 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 universe is great to us. So if if we find out that there is a lot of, you know, juicy targets in one area. We may just, you know, go and spend a week there if we're not on contract, you know. Of course. Um, if we're on contract, then we'll be spending time in the area that the contract is designated in until the contract is completed, depending on how motivated the client is to get it done. Of course. Um, but you are flexible. And moving completely around. flexible. Um, we don't really have... Um, a concrete home. Like, Kenora is probably the closest thing to that that we have, but we have people everywhere. And um, our pilots are willing to jump five jumps or 50 jumps to get to a place where there's good PvP. Okay. So, so let's say that wormholes come out in two months. How, like, how would that affect your alliance or corporation would you guys move into a wormhole and start acting like a real alliance like and when i say real alliance i mean an alliance with will you will you get structures you are going to have ctas or are you just going to um live in the wormholes day by day um that's a good question and that's one that comes to me every day almost and it uh, every day that it comes to me, I, I go back to our core mission and values. Why people joined the alliance in the first place was to not have taxes, was to not have CTAs, was to not have obligations other than just logging in and shooting shit, and sometimes getting paid to do it. Um, and to that end, I think that you know, obviously, goals change and 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 visions change and if the corpse at that point decide that they want something more out of it, if there's a consensus on that, I'd be willing to consider it. But for by and large, if people are joining sixth seal, they're doing it because they don't want to have a traditional structure or they've had it and they do want to try something different. Yeah. So I don't, I don't see that changing. I mean, like we might lay down a pause or two or something just super low commitment like that. Um, yeah. But I don't, I don't see us aspiring for anything that would tie us down to a specific area. Now, wormholes aren't here yet. And if they do happen and 
things change, then I'd be willing to take another look at that and reassess, you know, at that time. There is also another option. I just realized, and if we get wormholes, then maybe we will get that same wormholes that we have in EVE Online. And one of those wormholes is, is not a real wormhole. I cannot remember the name of that wormhole right now, but it's, it's, an, it's a wormhole with stations. It always have a connection to high sec or low sec or something like that. I, I, I don't know the details, but I would assume that we will get that system as well. So that would be pretty much like living inside Enriel or Konora for you guys. And you don't have to get any stations or anything of that sort. You can just hang in that uh, in that station. And in EVE Online, you have the jump clones. I'm not sure if we will get them. But mm -hmm. if we do, then in that wormhole, you can also put a jump clone. So you would actually be able to, if this will come, to live in Konora and have a jump clone inside a wormhole, in that specific wormhole, of course. So that would be a way for you guys to also hang in uh, in a wormhole without having taxes or CTAs. I think that I think that would probably be spectacular. It's we do fringe things and we kind of live on that edge. So if it's on the edge of Konora and if it's on the edge of Losec and Nullsec and Konora, or on the edge of whatever second wormhole space then that's probably where you'll find us okay thank you good space guy for this i hope and i really do think that your alliance will thrive in this game you have great goals and uh, and i think you um, you got the right mindset to to run this I, I was going to say your way but of course the alliance way because you have people that I think i like so i thank you so much for being here Shiv, thank you for having me, and I really enjoyed this time on your podcast and getting to know you more, too. Thank you.